Committee on the 13th of August, 2024, call this meeting to order. Everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. A pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for our morning prayer. As I was. Uncover, please. Heavenly Father, we humbly beseech thee, bless those who are assembled here. We pray for your guidance in our deliberations that we may exemplify the principles and the purposes of our tasks, that there's much to be done, so we pray for your blessings. Be so silent, watchful, and guidance, like the breeze through the trees, like the sun through the sky. We ask your protection and guidance. Bless all who are present and assist us with the council to make us or make this our sacred mission to honor those who have selflessly given without hesitation. Let their sacrifice not have been in vain. We associate ourselves to recognizing the worth while endeavor to preserve the memories of those who sacrifice for the life, liberty, freedom, justice for all. As we stand in reverence, let us remember the good we have done and ask to be forgiven for what we have failed to do. As those who fought and died for us in the past, present, and the future, let us not forget POWs, MIAs, and the KIAs killed in action. We consecrate our fellowship to remind us of those who have made the ultimate sacrifice to make this the land of the free because of the brave. God bless America. God bless our first responders. God bless the mothers who gave us our heroes. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Marcia, can we have roll call? Yes, sir. American Legion Pulse 59. Present. Black Widows? Present. Catholic War Veterans? Present. Disabled American Veterans? Mr. Contreras, not here. Korean War Veterans? Present. LULAC 777? Present. Marine Corps League? Present. Present, sir. South Texas, Afghanistan, and Iraqi Veterans? Present. Texas Military Department of Present. Soldiers. Present. Family readiness. Texas Veterans. Com oh no, this is Roberta. Present. Present. VA Laredo Outpatient Clinic. Ms. Cabido says she's stuck in traffic, sir, with a train. Okay. <laughs> Valerie. Not present. Veterans from Foreign Ward VFW. I'll be filling in for SO3 bus. Webb County Service Office. Present. Sir, you have a quorum. Thank you, Marshal. Oh, sorry, oh, sir. Rather. Sorry, sir, Missy Arroa is also okay. present. Yes. You do have a quorum, sir. Thank you, sir. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes for the July 9, 2024, as presented. No move. A second. Second. A second. And a motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion passes. Marshal, do we have anybody signed up for a citizen's comments? Yes, there, there's a few, sir. Okay. Good morning, comrades. Good morning, morning sir. Morning. My name is Ricardo Quijano. For the record, uh, this was not on the agenda, but I need to bring this up. Uh, so the VFW, uh, Texas Military Department also, and the Boy Scouts of America are linking up, we're collaborating. We're gonna have two events, but for right now, I'm gonna talk about one. It's the Black Retirement Ceremony, okay? We're gonna have it at a date to be determined. It's gonna be later on, but at this time, what we wanna do is collect flags. Flags, 
So we can let you know, could be dropped off the city of Laredo, Webb County, and East Coast can go to the Laredo National Guard Armory. There's gonna be a foot locker on box, old style, where they could, the, the boxes, the flags can be put in it. We'll get them, we'll hold them, and a later date, we're gonna retire those flags properly at Wisatcha Park. They're at the Boys uh, Scouts of America location. Okay, so I'll ask everyone that has flags that need to be retired, bring them to me, I'll take over them. Okay, that was one. Uh, the other item is, this was brought up uh, by um, female veterans also about Veterans Day. Veterans Day is almost around the corner, as we know, and started a calendar of, of entities. Uh, it is in collaboration with other organizations such as the Webb County Veterans Service Office where I'm gonna keep a calendar of all activities. As of now, there's four, activity, four, four activities for Veterans Day, which is the VA Clinic, uh, Jesse Gonzalez, Rock March, and the American Legion, uh, uh, November 11th. Uh, so there's four. And that way, if I get contacted, I can tell you if the calendar is open for an event. So organizations do not double book. That's what we're trying to do. So we can have maximum participations. If the school's gonna have something, an event for veterans, let's go you know, in numbers and not have five, 10 individuals. These students are, you know, helping us by celebrating Veterans Day and ask us to go. So what better way to go in numbers and show appreciation to what they're doing, what the students are doing. So an email was already sent out uh, to the school districts. I already spoke to school district, AUISD, LISD, and email was sent to Mr. Jimenez. Uh, I'll be the point of contact. I'll have a calendar and I'll give you the go ahead if it's booked or not. And I can share that with others. All right, that was it for right now. All right, that's it. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. 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 Any questions or comments? Questions? The uh, Catholic Cemetery has a box next to the American flag. Okay. Uh, are you going to collect those flags? They, uh, they can bring them. As long as they can bring them, you know. Um, I'll take them there and we'll fold them there. Uh, I'll ask for the service members of the troops to help me in folding the flag and getting them prepped. And of course, the Boy Scouts, they're going, to they're going to do the ceremony. Can you uh, notify Mr. Kaysen? We'll do. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Kehadman, I have a question also. This is uh, something uh, on, on the uh, coordinating the events for different Veterans Day's observations. This is something that this committee has been talking about now for, for a while. Yes, sir. As a committee and the Veterans Service organizations as, as a whole, uh, is this something that, that you want to take over and, and, and do on, the, on a regular basis? Every year? I mean, I'll do, yeah. I'll do the Veterans Organization because every year. It's something that, that we've been talking about for a long time because we do have a lot of events that, that overlap and, and doesn't give the veterans and the public the opportunity to go and attend these events because there's so many being uh, honored or at the same time. So, and we've been talking about having <coughs> somebody and with the help of the city council, uh, if this committee approves something like this, we can disseminate the information to all the governmental entities and all the VSOs that we have, uh, or organizations rather, to be able to have a calendar like you, you're speaking just now on all the events. And Memorial Day is the one that really gets really crowded. I, I, and I, and that, that is something that, uh, that would be very beneficial not only to the veterans, but to the public in general. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, uh, for Veterans Day, I, I could spearhead it. That's no problem. Let's, let's go ahead and put something like that on the, on the I, agenda next, next month. And I'll, I'll share it and I'll let everyone know. I'll email all organizations because as it is, I'm working with the Webb County Veterans Service Office. Um, and, you know, a lot of veterans do go to hit Mr. Garza's office. And that way he could also disseminate the information of activities, of events. Thank and you, Mr. Gahanna. I'll, I'll spearhead it. But, I mean, Memorial, I'm not going to, you know, I don't want over... Overreach. Overreach and uh, well, on my plate. Then maybe we can get some help or something, you know. But it's something that we do need. Uh, <laughs> the yes, memorial sir. is, is, is the yes, worst sir. one of all. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Any other questions or comments? Anybody else? Marsha? Anyone? No, that, that would be it, sir. That would be it. Ni con Antioquos miro bien, so.
Next item on the agenda, we have communications and announcements. First item is proclamation from the city of Laredo honoring the 13 brave, brave warriors, and servicemen and women who died during the evacuation from Afghanistan. The city will present National United 13 Memorial Proclamation to Elizabeth Olguin, mother of Lance Corporal David Lee Espinosa. Mayor. Good morning, Good morning. Dr. Victor Trevino, Mayor for the City of Laredo. Before, yes. He's going to present to her. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, he needs to go through his program. Go right. ahead, Mayor. Um, before we do the proclamation, I'd like to say a couple of words. First of all, it's an honor for me to stand here today to honor those who have served our country and have served in various conflicts in the world. But today we're to honor our fallen heroes that had made the ultimate sacrifice in the Abbey Gate Airport in Afghanistan. We can never repay this incredible debt, but we can honor the sacrifice by cherishing the freedoms that we have because of these honorable acts. In the same breath, we're here to honor one of our own, Lance Corporal David Lee Espinosa because we honor him with the following proclamation, which I will read. If I may, I'll read the proclamation. Absolutely. Office of the Mayor, Sierra Laredo, Texas proclamation. Whereas on the 26th day of August, 2021, 13 brave men dedicated American heroes made the ultimate sacrifice at the Abbey Gate Airport, Afghanistan while evacuating the last American allies. And whereas our grateful nation can never repay the sacrifice nor make less the suffering of the families. And whereas the 13 service members died together are recognized as the United 13. And whereas this grateful nation commemorates in the month of August by holding 13 1.3 mile individual marches throughout the nation to pay tribute to each of our fallen heroes starting on the 13th of August through the 26th. And whereas the first hero to be honored is our own Marine Lance Corporal David Lee Espinosa being the last Texan to die in Afghanistan. And whereas Lance Corporal David Lee Espinosa graduated from LBJ High School, the first 1.3 mile march will start in front of LBJ on August the 13th. And whereas we can never say or do enough to thank our dedicated brave heroes for the sacrifice and sacrifice to our country, nor ease the suffering to their families. Now, therefore, I, Dr. Victor Di Trevino, by the virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of City of Laredo, County of Webb, State of Texas, do hereby proclaim August 2024 as National United 13 Memorial Month in Laredo, Texas, for David Lee Espinosa and his comrades. Warriors, attention! Present. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, yesterday, we were uh, uh, advised that this uh, proclamation was going to happen in here in this, in this committee, in this meeting. And we took the, uh, the opportunity to uh, uh, say a few words to the, uh, the family of Lance Corporal uh, and making sure that we wanted to make him an honorary officer. 
and we wanted to present the uh, family with the uh, the badge and our commission papers for uh, for, for Lance Corporal David uh, and making sure that they take that home and they remember that we wish that he would come back and we wish that we can bring him back because what he did and what he went through and what he went through, through in, in his life that we researched, he would have been the perfect police officer for the city of Laredo. So we take that into deep heart for, with us and we want to make sure that we present with, to the family uh, today. So today we honor Marine Lance Corporal David Lee Spinoza. If you, if you allow me to, Chairman. Sure, really, sure. Uh, a brave son of Laredo who made the ultimate sacrifice in Afghanistan. His unwavering dedication to service exemplifies the highest ideals of our community and nation. In recognition of his heroism, we are proud to posthumously name him an honorary Laredo police officer. David's legacy of courage and commitment will forever inspire us. To his family, we extend our deepest gratitude and support. May his memory guide us in serving and protecting our community with the same banner he displayed. If you want to join us, this is what we're gifting to the family. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Thank you. Mayor, to you and the City Council of the City of Laredo, thank you for bestowing this great honor to our fallen heroes, to our fallen warriors. Chief, to you and the men and women that protect the city of us and all the veterans in this community, thank you so much for doing the same thing and bestowing this honor on the fallen warriors that keep protecting the Constitution of the United States. May God bless America. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Alvarado gave me a, a speech that I think it was uh, something that maybe we can uh, say it here. Absolutely. It's a, it's a uh, well, it's not a speech, it's more like a point. And I think it was a beautiful, beautiful word. So I just want to say uh, so that we can get recorded in our minutes, in your minutes. Absolutely. Uh, the Marines stood watch. When the winds of war blew across our, our shores of history, this young man stood on the yellow footprints in San Diego. Through trials and tribune called the crucible, crucible, and after being injured, this warrior did not quit. He stood his watch to make us proud. On graduation, he told his parents, I'm a 0311, a badass Marine. The US Marine Corps took their baby and turned him into a noble young man. While some of us sleep under the comfort of we call freedom, this Marine stood his watch. While others went to school, got jobs, this Marine stood his watch. And yet while others got married and started a family, this Marine stood his watch. Then the clouds of war hit the pages of American history. Still, this Marine stood his watch. He would cast his gaze upon the stars and think of his family. Yet again, this Marine stood his watch. Thinking of his brothers and sisters, needing his advice and guidance, he needed to hold their hand Still, his, this Marine stood his watch. He stood his watch for the rest of his life so that we, our family, our fellow countrymen would sleep peacefully under the secure blanket of freedom because this Marine stood his watch. Today, we pay, pay tribute to his service, sacrifice, and his family's suffering 
and because there's no way we can ever repay the ultimate sacrifice because this Marine stood his watch. We pay tribute to those 13 warriors who together paid the ultimate price of freedom to be recognized as the United 13. It is appropriate to say thank you by being Americans worth dying for. God bless Lance Corporal David Lee Espinosa, who stood his watch. God bless his family. God bless America, land of the free because of the brave. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Let me say that this committee that consists of about 15 veteran service organizations, am I correct? Yes, sir. It's exactly why this committee was formed and what we do now. To improve the quality of that for our veterans and to continue the legacy of the fallen warriors. This event is exactly what this committee is about. But thanks to you, the mayor and the city council, the Laredo Police Department, men and women, and the citizens of this community, we can keep the memory and the legacy of our fallen warriors alive. Thank you very much for this event. Thank you, John. Well, the job well done. Is Ms. Cabello here? Yes, sir, she made it. Next item on the agenda, we have the VA outpatient uh, clinic representative to discuss a food drive to be held or scheduled for the 15th a whole health summit uh, on the 29th and additional information. Okay. You? Good morning, Chris Cabido for the record. Um, I'm here representing the VA to speak on some of the items that we have and some of the events that we have for this month. On Thursday, on the 15th, we will be having the food drive for our veterans. We usually serve about 350. I do ask that the police help us with our traffic. Now that we're here, we did send an email out. Um, it starts at 9, but usually we have the line already by 6 o'clock in the morning. So um, it's until su uh, supplies last. So any veteran, just bring their I your ID. If you're not able to go, your family member could go. Just bring your ID, and we'll be able to process uh the food. You don't have to get off. It's a drive through. We'll be ready for you. Um, then we also have a whole health summit, which is our new um, department, which we do Tai Chi, yoga, painting for some of our veterans that need kind of an outing or a gathering with veterans. We do have that available. The summit is on the 29th. I do have some flyers here that I'm going to put out and they'll speak more on more in depth about this department and what we're offering our veterans to be kind of a mental health, um, behavioral health, or if you just wanna be around other veterans, which we have that in our clinic all the time, right? So now we're gonna have, we do provide some more of the whole health, which is gonna be beneficial for your body and your mind as well. Um, a couple things that I do wanna bring up, we did have the CPAP, uh, CPAP clinic that we started here. You don't have to travel to Corpus anymore. We started with one day out of the month that did fill up pretty quick. So we were 90 days out, um, no availability. So we were able to get another day. So we're doing two days out of the month now. So if you do have an appointment that is going to Corpus because there is no availability, we are starting this month. Um, we'll have two days available during the month. So just get with your doctor, with the clerks in the front to say, I want to be seen here and instead of driving to Corpus if you have any CPAP issues or the clinic, that's, that's also available. Um, we do have our travel um, personnel now, so if you need to do travel, we'd have somebody that could work with you face-to-face -face if you don't know how to process it or if you need, if you have any questions on where your claim is, um, he is in the lobby, he is, will be available as well. And we just finally got another provider for our behavioral health. Um, she will be available, she's going through our new employee orientation today. She is replacing Dr. Yu. Um, so if that was your provider in the past, we have a replacement for her now. Um, I would say within the next couple of weeks, she'll be available to start taking patients. That's all that I have. If anybody has any questions. Yeah, Ms. Cavidia, just to a point of reference or information, uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of veterans that are not signed up with the VA right. clinic right now. Uh, I've been asked if you're not if you don't have a VA ID card, can you still go and participate in this food drive if you have the designation on your license or any other proof right. of being a veteran? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. 
majority of all veterans have either a license plate, a hat, a sticker, so we pretty much know, but you don't have to be signed up with the clinic to be able, as long as you're a veteran, you have it in your driver's license, you have your DD-214, or you have anything that identifies you as a veteran, you'll be able to use that. By the same token, if you're not signed up with a local VA clinic, please do so, because the more numbers, the more numbers that we have, the more members that we have, the more help we're going to get from D.C., from Washington. Correct. So we encourage all, all veterans in this community, it doesn't include only the hill, it's the surrounding areas, correct? Yeah, correct. Uh, to, we, uh, travel, we cover all the way from Zapata all the way up to Crystal City. Um, so if if you are 30 miles out, you are you could get a voucher to go to a community care provider um, through the VA and be able to process that um, anything that you have. I always tell everybody, I know that we have a lot of veterans that always say, well, I don't need it. The elderly needs it more than me, but we are here to serve anybody that has served our country and that qualify for our services. So if you don't need it now, you might need it in a couple of years, and it's better to have it than not to have it. You only have to go once a year to keep active, um, but if you do have medications or any specialty that you need, if you are if you are registered with us and you qualify, we're able to send you to those community care providers. Thank you, Ms. Cavillo. Any sure. other questions? Sure. Uh, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, I have two questions, sir. Go ahead. Uh, Ms. Cavido, do you need volunteers for the food drive or you already have people? We have uh, Gerald TC from Laredo, I, I think it's South High School. Um, they will be helping us this time. Okay, so you're good with that. We're good with okay, that. Okay, a second question. The, the flyer you have there, do you have it in digital form? I do. Will you send it to me? Yes, I will send it. Okay, thank and you. And just to add to that, we have, um, I don't know if I missed it, but... Our Veterans Day event, we have already agreed to do it on November the 7th. Um, we were planning on talking to Mr. Segovia and the community to use the, the new Veterans Plaza. I think it'll be great to kind of have it there instead of on our clinic because I'm kind of, I don't have a lot of space to do it. Last year we did have over 500 people there and my space is not, I, I do foresee that it's going to be much bigger this year. Um, we did have 23 organizations. We're up to 26 now that have been signed up. So I will work to try to see if I could get that plaza and we could probably do it there. I think it'll be great for the veterans to be able to enjoy their own plaza and, and an event that's going to be working there. What was the date on that, Ms. Covington? November 7th. You got that, Mr. Helen? Yes, sir. From 11 to 1 o'clock. Right now, we still have to finalize the dates just to see if we're able to use the plaza and then what time. But I'll get with you afterwards once we finalize it. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I have it. Okay. Mr. Garza? Yeah, I had a question. So for next time, Ms. Garrido, for next meeting, I know that uh, some veterans, they weren't eligible to get health services before at the VA clinic with the new PACT Act and the second, I think we're in the second phase of yes. the rollout. Now they may qualify. Do you think we can invite, I, I don't know if it would be you or if you have a specific person that can come and just give us a quick brief on the next meeting on okay. yeah. on that? No, we have not, definitely not me, right? But I could have somebody <laughs> else. I don't want to speak out of turn, so there, we well, have. Well, I don't know, it might be you or. Right, I, we I'm have specific sure. people that know all the ins and outs, um, the black and white on the second phase of the PACT Act for all those that don't qual didn't qualify at one point, do qualify now. Um, so I'll bring somebody that will be able to speak that and bring some flyers so people can take home and read. Again, we could register. You don't necessarily have to go into the clinic to register. You could do it online. You could do it. Um, you could fill out the application and take it in, and we'll tell you whether you qualify or you don't. So It's a very simple application, VA Form 10-10, I believe it is. Yeah. Um, Any other questions? Any other questions or comments? Thank um, you, Ms. Cavillo. Off, uh, off the subject, it has nothing to do with anything. Are you related to the founders of Crystal City? I'm not. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank you. it. Next item on the agenda, we have a Catholic board veteran representative to begin planning for the veterans, Vietnam Veterans Plaza event for Veterans Day. Mr. Segovia? For the record, Mr. Segovia, and uh, I brought Crystal up here because uh, about a month ago she approached me at the VA clinic uh, telling me that last year she held a Veterans Day event at the clinic, but it got, was kind of crowded. 
So she suggested that maybe we could do it at the Vienna Veris Plaza. Being November and shouldn't be that hot, you know. So uh, I said, yeah, that'd be a great idea to have it out there at the Vietnam Veterans Plaza. So I've already contacted the school districts, uh, LIZ, UISD, uh, so that they can inform the other schools not to hold any veteran appreciation day, on, particularly on November 7th. The only thing they're waiting for is the, the hour, okay? That's, I don't know what hour we're going to plan it. What do you think? Well, I know that last year we did it from 11 to 1 because a lot of the veterans still work and I wanted to do it during their lunch hour so they could go and at least get some information. Um, we could keep it the same way or we could do it earlier. It really, And I didn't want to plan it so early because I know a lot, of, a lot of organizations had their Veterans Day breakfast at the schools and I had my sons as well. So I just wanted to make sure, but if everybody's okay with keeping it from 11 to 1, we could do that. Okay. Well, like I said, I, I notified the school districts and they sent out an email to all the school teachers notifying them that we are having a Veterans Day event on November 7th. Now, I did invite them also, if any of the schools want to set up a tent and, you know, represent some of the students there honoring veterans, you know, they can do so. Uh, Veronica Casillo offered for the, to bring the band out there, you know, uh, we need some music. Uh, so, okay. so everything's in the planning. It looks good, and uh, hopefully, uh, John Rafila also uh, and uh, and uh, Parks and Wright, Anita, uh, they will help us set up tents and chairs and you know everything that we need to to make it a a real nice event out there. Hopefully, we will have catering uh, donated by uh, Laredo Merchants and uh, make it a. 11 to 5, 11 to 6 event out there. Uh, hopefully by that time, hopefully, uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, John Rafila is doing a nine, a, a, mini, a miniature nine, uh, nine hole golf, uh, miniature golf course. The bathrooms are almost ready and they will have air condition and there are indiv indiv individual stalls on each bedroom for the, I mean bathroom for the ladies or for the men and so it's looking real nice out there. Thank you, for, say, yes, thank you Mayor, for your, for your uh, support on this. And uh, looking forward to having one of the best veteran parks in the Rito. Absolutely. With that, uh, unless somebody has a opposition, it's 11 to 1 it sounds great. Uh, the, the band is even better because the last time Mr. Alvarez was singing and it worked out too well. <laughs> Yeah, the, the plan is to make it bigger than what it was last year and of course to grow every year, right, to get more of the organizations that provide the veterans um, services. So that way it could be kind of a one-stop shop for the veterans to be able to go to that event, not only get food, enjoy the family and get the information that they need of all the organizations out there that are giving this um, information for them. We do have some of the organizations that have already we asked them to come with a gift raffle because we do raffles throughout the event um, we do have some donations for foods so we have been working with the same organizations that we were last year and we're adding more to that so as we go we'll be growing and growing so i don't know about from a one to six <laughs> but <laughs> That's, that's kind of into my own personal time, but but I, I think definitely from 11 to 1 or 2 the latest, um, just because we do have a lot of our employees that are not going to be able to stay longer, but any other organization that wants to continue the event and just take it to the night, well, that's how you guys yeah, you I do appreciate it. <laughs> we, we do appreciate the help, though. Okay. I, I do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Great job. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Next item on the agenda, we have items for discussion and possible action. First item is discussion with possible action by TMDS and FR representative regarding the city employees who are veterans to have an advantage an additional six to eight hours of sick leave to go to the VA clinics appointments. Who's going to handle this? Mr. Kihana. Mr. Kihana. This is a perfect day when we have uh, the mayor and some of the other hey, city officials. Well, <laughs> Lock the doors. We got Councilman Seattle here also. Yeah. Always there for the veterans. Thank you. 
As last month, uh, well, good morning, still morning? Afternoon, the afternoon. My name is Ricardo for the record. Last month, uh, my co um, fellow comrade, Jesus Rivas, came by and we spoke about having uh, sick leave for veterans. Because as you know, this year, any organization uh, employer gives you sick days. But for veterans, as we know, our bodies, we might be 40, but we feel like 60. We might be 30, but feel like, you know. Who's 40? Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> exactly. Our bodies don't feel like that. Um, and w when we get those days for sick days, we have access to go to the VA clinic. And the VA clinic, uh, we get checked out for blood. And a week later, we, you know, we get to get our, med our results read, which, of course, we don't like. Which, but we got to see them. And we got to do it and abide by it. And at times, uh, yourself and myself, we know that we don't want to waste time uh, from our sick days. With the state, as you know, I work for the Texas Military Department. I know the federal has a different uh, uh, program where we get veteran sick day, veteran sick leave, right? And we're asking, we don't want to overstep our boundaries. We're just asking for six to eight hours if it could be brought up by the council for veterans only going to the Veterans Affairs Clinic. Because when you go to the Veterans Affairs Clinic and you do that medical appointment, when you log out, when you're about to leave, you're gonna get the paper that you were there, confirmation. That's one way. And the other way is by going through my healthy event. You probably wait like a couple, two days and you'll get a confirmation that you did go to your appointment. That way you could turn it in. If it goes, you turn that paper in to your department head and you get credited for the amount of time that you were out at the VA clinic. This is uh, an initiative uh, for, an incentive, an initiative for veterans to go and get checked out. Instead of not doing and not doing it, this is free, you're getting the time off, you're getting a free checkup at the VA clinic, it could save you. And you, know, you get your blood work, it's hell. If you get cancer, it could be identified quick. You got diabetes, they'll tell you, eat healthier. So it, it's it's positive way, it, it, it's all positive. And we ask uh, for a vote, the VFW asked for a vote so it could go to city council and get six to eight hours of veteran leave besides the sick days, but only at the VA clinic. Any questions or comments? That would also increase the numbers that you were saying earlier, uh, Chairman, that uh, we, would for not for but it would allow other veterans that might work with the city but are not registered to register to and get their might save their lives because normally they might not go uh, see a doctor get their blood work but it might increase those numbers and miss uh wants to say something come on yeah just to add to that with our clinic our clinic is the smallest in our organization however we do cover from brownsville all the way to corpus if we don't have a specialty here um, or within the surrounding areas, we, we do give the veterans the option to travel to Corpus or to travel to any of our other um, CBOX to make sure that they receive the care that they want. Of course, it is to the veterans' discretion of where they want to go, so that would be something that they will probably need to leave as well because we don't carry a lot of our specialty in-house. We would have to send them out to the community, whether it's cardiologists, podiatry, um, neurology, or whatever it is, um, they would have to go out to the community as well, and that's a wait, so. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. And this is just to find out, to get that veteran at the clinic. That's it's also what it's about. Get, getting him or her registered and in the clinic and making sure they're taken care of. And as you know, it's twice a year we get our blood work done and get seen by the by our uh, physician. All right. So that's for those four things right there. I think six to eight hours should be enough, and that's what we all ask for. And hopefully the city uh, takes the lead on this. And yeah. if it does come. Uh, we can go, uh, the VFW can go to the Webb County and introduce it, and it could be a trickle fit and get the veterans taken care of. Because it's about taking care of veterans, the community, that's what it's about. We're gonna vote on this item, and we understand that this item is gonna be sent to the city council for consideration, and we understand that they have to, to abide by the Texas government code. <clears throat> and we certainly don't want them to not do so. So, uh, is that any other questions or comments? Sure, question. 
Roger. Mr. Quijano, could you tell us uh, other people are already doing this around? The, uh, the so state of Texas, uh, where I work at with the Texas Military Department, uh, we had 120 hours of veteran leave. Uh, but, of course, it's, we're not going to ask for that much. It's uh, yeah, no, like my favorite word would always say, no queremos hacer rastrillos. Just a little bit. That's it. And anytime I need to go to the VA, I just submit my, uh, my uh, veteran, leave, veteran leave form. It gets approved automatically, come back with uh, a copy that I attended the, my appointment, and I get credited. Uh, I know the federal, uh, federal side, uh, customs, uh, do something similar. It's, uh, I believe it's called the Wonder, Wonder, Wonder Warrior Project right, or something Wonder like Warrior. that. For the first, uh, first or second year, they do the federal. So it, it's been done. And there's also... TDC. Texas Veterans Commission does it too. Okay. So, so there, there is some precedent. There, yeah, there's precedents. It, yes. There's, uh, yes. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. And last time I did bring uh, the introduction of Aaron Leaf with the, the state. So I do have uh, the law, the code for it. Oh, if, the Texas code. If you all need it, the Texas code for it. Mm -hmm. I do have it. I do have a form. I emailed it to you last month, um, but I have another copy for um, you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Do we have any other comments or questions? Does everyone understand this, this motion? Yes. yes. With this motion being read, I would entertain a motion to approve this, this item. We have, we have a motion and a second. Uh, a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against nay. Aye. Motion passes. This motion will be forwarded to the City Council of Laredo to, for consideration. Thank you so much, Thank Mr. Gano. Yeah. Ms. Gano. Oh, no, I was just going to ask if you could um, share with us, men on bun, that way we can put it together. Okay. And, and I want to make sure that those that, that are, are, yeah. are virtual uh, attendants, they also voted for this? I heard Mr. Valdez. I'm sorry, Mr. Lopez. 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 And what about Blackwood? Okay, just for the record. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you have a question? Or? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon, board. Uh, for the record, my name is Alfredo Agredano. Uh, last month on July the 9th, I came up before this board and I asked them that uh, not to limit the hours to the veterans, that make it unlimited hours. As all veterans know, sometimes we go to the veteran clinic and they send us to San Antonio, they send us to Corpus, and they send us to Hollington. So it's going to take more than six hours. Now, are these six hours going to be per day, per week, per month, or per year? So I'm asking the board to reconsider this and maybe just make it unlimited. If and when the veteran can bring documentation that they were at the VA clinic and how many hours they were there. Because as, we, as veterans, we know that sometimes, you know, we, we have to go to out-of-town clinics, not just once or twice, maybe three times a year, and that takes time. So there, there I'm no here doubt. just to... I believe that the, the nature of the, of the motion as it's passed was to get us as much as hours as we can approved by the city council. Okay. I don't think it was a limit to six to eight. I mean, because we discussed about being able to adhere to the Texas government code and so on and so forth. So I think it's well understood to, to try to get it as many hours as possible within their, their parameters of how they operate. Yes, sir. Mr. Okay. Chairman, I, that, I, I believe the intent was minimum six to eight. Yes. Minimum. So once they do the research, the, I'm, I'm assuming the HR department, management, whoever does that, they can figure out, okay, well, you have you do your blood work twice a year, you see your doctor twice a year, so that should be so many hours, and maybe you need to go a medical appointment to San Antonio, that probably take all day too. So they'll figure it out. I believe the intent, uh, Mr. Quijano, was uh, minimum six to eight. If, obviously, if they say 12, 100, whatever, I don't know, whatever yeah. amount, it, would I, am we, I We don't correct? want to settle the people who are making the decision to say, well, we can't do it because you ask unlimited but we can do 100 or we can do 10. And, and it's up to them. We, we don't know what's going on, although you served in the, in the city council before, so you know how it operates. I mean, there's, there's, yes, sir. there's budgets and things like that. And yeah. We don't want to handcuff them to unlimited 
and not get 50 or whatever else number they, they, they approve, if they approve any at all. Yeah. So, so if we put a, a set, certain number, then we kind of handcuff them from saying, we can't do it because what you're asking, we can't do that. Okay. I think that's the... Uh, yeah, I, I thought understand. that was the intent that the, that would be the minimum. The, the, the minimum, minimum was, uh, the hours we're looking at was six to eight. We did have a meeting with the VFW, our members. Our members did vote six to eight. There was a vote also uh, to advise it was, that's why I'm saying six to eight members did vote on yeah. that, six to eight. Uh, of course, because we don't, the thing is we don't want to take advantage. It's just uh, to blood work and go to the VA clinic so that service member can go and know uh, how his health is going, was progressing or degressing, whatever it may be on that service member, of course then the service member can use also those hours that they have for sick leave. And so it's kind of well, like... I think it's very well understood. And luckily, like I said, we have a lot of members from the city council here in the media. And I think that uh, if we need to, we'll receive the, uh, the, the motion and read, uh, reread it. Uh, but I don't think we need to. I think All it's right. very well understood by everybody. Yeah. Is that Thank correct? You. Everybody's in favor of that? Yeah, it, uh, minimum if they say, if they so say, 10 hours, well, that's great if they say, is that okay, Mr. Quijano? Yeah, it, that's fine, of course, it would it's, it's going to be, uh, of course, the city council that's yeah. going to vote on it, and it's, and but. And we can have that discussion with HR. Yeah, they yes. would have to sure. decide. Exactly. Okay. okay. Yes, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, we have discussion with possible action by the veterans of the Foreign Wars representative regarding having a representative, representatives, to represent veterans' issues during the City of Laredo, Washington, D.C. legislative trip. Mr. Quijano? Uh, once again, good afternoon. This item was brought up last month and was asked to bring it back again uh, this month for a vote. And part of it was to, in February, the City Council goes to Washington, D.C. and represent the city for any kind of funding uh, anything, you know, for the city of Laredo, represent the city and to help the city of Laredo. Uh, it was brought up to one of our, it was brought up by one of our members um, and we put it up to a vote, right? Uh, we did have, of course, like I said, a meeting, but we tabled the item also. We, we didn't, we had to table it because we, we couldn't discuss it that much into detail. It was, it was quite a bit because I made a call to the Texas VFW. Texas VFW down in Austin, um, I told them what we want to do, uh, you know, can you give some guidance, right, in having a member of our community go and uh, represent, you know, the veterans in Washington, from uh, Laredo down at Washington, D.C. Uh, Mr. Fuller, uh, Mitch Fuller, I believe it's Mr. Fuller, he's part of the delegation down in Austin. He's been doing that for a while. And I'm going to tell you one thing he did tell me. Any veteran, and I'm pretty sure the Marine Corps, American Legion, DAV, and the VFW itself, if we go to Washington and we use, you know, our headgear, our cap, you're one, right? That's what we had to table. We're one. What I mean, we're one, we're going to represent one, which is the VFW. Not Laredo, but the VFW, if we put on that hat. If the American Corps Legion goes and you put on your hat, you're going to represent the Marine Corps and you're going to represent you know, what they stand for. That's why we every organization has uh, delegates at Washington, D.C., which they go and visit um, council, uh, congressmen, senators, and that's what they do. Uh, it was best said that we go to our local congressmen and advocate from our local uh, congressmen to do something like this. But not at Washington. And, and each, each organization do have delegates that lobbyists and they do that, the uh, BMW, American Legion, but you're asking to have a representative from a yep. local yep. area to represent all veterans in this area here we can. on the issues that, that concern our local, not the national problems, it's basically the problems that we have here locally. Exactly. Am I correct in assuming that? Yes, exactly. Whatever is local here, and we had to go with our congressman. Yeah, and and the, the, the national organizations through the locals, they, they handle their their business their way. Mm -hmm. We need to handle ours by doing this if it's approved by the city council. 
And I think that once it's approved, then we have to find a vehicle on how to select who might uh, represent the, uh, the veterans community uh, and how many. Uh, once, once the city council does approve it, if they do approve it. So uh, let me see if I understood, Mr. Quijano. You're saying if to send some the, to send a Laredo veteran to represent the city of Laredo, not to represent their particular organization. Yes. So it would be like they'd say they would wear a hat or a shirt representing veterans from Laredo, not the organization that they belong to. Exactly. Did I understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, because you know one of the things that they do, and I happen to to attend one of those some some time back. The transportation department and their different civilian uh, organizations, they send their own representatives out there on their own nickel. Here, uh, I don't think we're asking for a nickel. We're asking the city to to foot the bill for this representative to go out there and take care of business as, as far as uh, the uh, the benefit, <coughs> excuse me, improving the welfare of uh, of our veterans. Or maybe uh, but we need to make it sure that uh, what Mr. Garza said, whoever is selected is going to represent all of us. Not, not that one person that they happen to belong to or that one organization they happen to belong to. In, uh, in, every, in our mind, did the VFW want the city to foot the bill? Because that bill comes back to the taxpayers and that's something an uh, organization doesn't want the taxpayers to foot the bill for, for a trip, for a veteran. Uh, I think whoever's going to uh, the organization should sponsor that. Sponsor. Okay. That's not something that needs to be clarified. Yeah, sure. And, and maybe we can create um, a subcommittee to with representatives of some of the, several of the organizations um, to identify that representative, and then also discuss some of the items that they would like to be discussed. Yeah. To be discussed in Washington, just to make and, sure and that, that and there's the, yes, and that's what we need to do because if we have we have organizations here that really or not financially fit, mm -hmm. if they're selected to put the bill by their organizations. Let's, we gotta be honest about that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, organizations that are just a handful of people and, and they don't have the finances. And being with the VFW also, we could also call the uh, Mr. Fuller, which is the delegate for the state of Texas, the VFW. And he's, he could give us the ins and outs, the do's and don'ts of what we could do and not do also at the same time. We uh, having a conference, a Zoom teams meeting, and uh, be a great asset to help us. Because that's going to be a major issue. I mean, the, is. these trips out there are not cheap. I mean, it's I expensive. Know. I know. Uh, and so whoever goes out there, uh, there's, there's, there's going to be money involved. Yes, sir. And that, that's a decision that needs to be made by the city whether they allow us to do that and then who's going to foot the bill. Exactly. I mean, there, there's no sense in, in not sugarcoating there or trying to sugarcoat it that there is no money involved. There is serious money involved. Exactly. So you're gonna, you're gonna be out there, what, a week, 10 days? I don't remember now, but still. No. Whoever goes out there doesn't have to be there for the duration of the trip because they're gonna meet with specific people, Secretary of the Army probably, or a representative from them, or, or the, the Better Secretary Affairs. of Defense. You know, there's Affairs. different organizations that you're gonna have pre-planned meetings with all these people out there. Who's and the how job? are we gonna improve the quality of life for our veterans in by Laredo. either uh, in a VA clinic, uh, many other things. There is definitely an uptake to being able to do this. There's an upside to it. Mr. Chairman, maybe uh, we should, like uh, the con con uh, councilwoman says, create a committee, subcommittee, to kind of iron all that out, specifically discussion. that and bring only the whatever the recommendation of the committee is to to the uh, to our Veterans Advisory Committee and let us know what they decided and so, go so. from there uh, instead of trying to figure all that stuff out here and just bring yeah. something more in a complete packet. Let's, let's yeah, go ahead and, and vote on this, on this issue, on this item, as, and if it's approved, which probably will, send it to, to the City Council and see what they say and then we'll form what uh, what we need to be able to make it happen, you know, uh, and, and many other, not only the, the expenses, but uh, 
we have the, the umbrella of the city that we are actually representing the city of Laredo, and that only happens through the approval of the city council. We have to remember, we're just an arm of the city council, this committee is. And I think we're doing great, great work. It's good to see so many people are here today and, and, and take the, the word out of, of what kind of work this committee does. And I think we've done some very good work here in the last, uh, what is it, 18 months or so? More. Uh, so let's approve it if we and send it to, to, to the city council. Once they approve it, then we can work out the, uh, the necessary uh, mechanism to make it happen. Sure. All right? Thank you, sir. Thank Any you. other questions, comments? <coughs> Mr. Gargano? Yes, sir. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, as well as I know for the record, on this item, sir, I would like to put my name on the head, see if uh, I can uh, be one of the representatives representing the veterans. Being that when I was a city councilman, every year we used to go to Washington and we used to lobby for a lot of stuff for Laredo. Right. You know, transportation, housing, uh, uh, streets, and uh, fire department, police department. So I do have experience as far as going to Washington and lobbying for, for, for uh, for the different uh, departments there. So I would like just to put my name on the head and maybe consider me for one of these positions. Thank you, Mr. Regano. Okay, thank you, sir. Any other questions or comments? <coughs> Excuse me. All those in favor of this motion say aye. 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 All those against, nay. Motion passes. Chairman, I abstain. South Texas and Garrison abstain. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, any other questions or anything? Now, like I normally do before we adjourn this meeting, is any comments by anybody that will improve the quality of life for our veterans, now is the time to speak up. Again? So, right. um, I have an announcement. Sure, go ahead. Um, I would like to announce that I believe, I'm just checking my um, calendar. So next Thursday, the August 22nd at 9, in AM, um, we will be having the groundbreaking ceremony for the tiny home project ah, on, oh, Lafayette, yes. on Lafayette. So if anybody is available, and um, you're more than welcome to, to join. Thank you. That's the 22nd, you said? The 22nd. At what time? Uh, at, nine, at 9 AM at um, Lafayette and San Ignacio. Uh, OK. And then um, I would also like to uh, share that we, we um, finally approved the naming for the Credit Koreans vet, um, Veterans Memorial Walkway um, at Slaughter Park. And um, I did want to see if maybe the chief could connect with um, some of the representatives to, to see how they would like uh, Mr. Sanchez, do you have any comments on that? Yeah, Mr. Sorry about my voice. Yes, sir. Oh. Yesterday, I went out there to, to the trail. I walked it. It has a few ways into the trails, four. I went with Coach uh, Ramirez from okay. Parks. I, I was out there with them. And um, we, we located two, two good heads to the trail. Mm -hmm. That would be nice to put signs. So they're going to start working on the signs already. Uh, and they, they do them internally, so it's not going to cost anything. Mm -hmm. uh, Parks mm -hmm. makes them. So we're going to, it's already in the making. So Wonderful. And when that gets done, we'll, we'll set a date, and hopefully Mr. Sanchez can be there also. Yes. yes. All right. Well, wonderful. Thank you for bringing that up to yes, Absolutely. Anything else? I have an, uh, uh, yes, just a, a comment. A few years ago, maybe two years ago, uh, Mr. Lopez uh, Gabriel, he's online right now, he requested information from the city to see how many uh, veterans worked for the city. I don't know if you remember that. Yes, I do. And then uh, HR, with the help of HR, well, they gave us all the veterans, and then um, they broke it down in departments, like how, how many veterans in the, the departments. And I, I wanted to thank the chief because they, they're the leaders in hiring veterans here in Laredo, the police department. So just wanted to let you know. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. It is 12.30. Entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. We have a second. Motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those against? Aye. aye. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much. Thank you.